So I had on a different outfit, and then um, I thought, because it had too much green, but then I still have on green, so anyways, we were trying to figure that out. So, hey, I just joined TikTok this morning, you guys. How fun is that app? Oh, my God. I could do that all day long. Did I ever try to stop me? I just was like, oh, this is so great. Because you do the songs and you lip sync. Oh, man. I'm As soon as I get off of here, I'm probably going to do more. That is so much fun. Go check it out. I think I'm uh, at Judge Over Show. I think it's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what the profile is. But I put a Judge Over Show. I don't know if it's at Judge Over Show, though. I don't know how their thing works. I, I just went on this morning. I had a blast. Oh, my gosh. I did, like, six videos or something in a row. I was like, oh, this is so fun. I was like, oh, I know this song. Oh, I know this song. I was like, trying to, you know, I have, like, so many songs I know. So that I'm going to have so much fun with that. I could just do song after song after song. Oh, man. Oh, that, what a what a what a fun thing! Cause here's the thing: you can get in trouble on a lot of the apps for uh, using music. So I guess since it's only a short amount, it's just like uh, 15 seconds or less. Maybe that's allowed. So that's why it's fun. Cause normally you get taken down for music, so you can't make a lot of these videos with a lot of these songs from some of these artists so I'm like oh this is great because it has all like all the music on there so if you guys haven't tried it yet oh how fun TikTok I've been seeing everyone do the videos but um I just hadn't gone on the app yet and uh, that was a blast I'm gonna do more of that but anyways so I heard this is ridiculous so um President Trump is supposedly going is saying that he's gonna charge the post office uh, like the post, he's saying, okay, blah, 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 blah. let me gather my brain. He's saying the charge, the post office needs to charge everyone four times the amount for postage um, in order for them to get funding from the government right now. For them to get the funding for the coronavirus, they have to increase their prices by four times the amount, which is absolutely insane. Four times the amount for postage on everything? That would just be insane. People are already broke. I don't know what the hell is going on. This is absolutely ridiculous. And then, um, so I don't know what's going to happen there. I just saw that on Twitter. So take that as you may. But you guys, this is a regular flu virus. Flu viruses kill 50,000 people, around 50,000 people a year in the U.S. and around 650,000 worldwide every year. All we did was track the regular flu virus. Flu virus. And we just, like, made it a bigger deal. Like, we just created mass hysteria about the regular flu virus. And now we're seeing the numbers come in. It's at 50,000, like the regular flu virus. And people that have gotten it have recovered, like the regular flu virus. The only people that have died are the people that were very ill that would have died from the regular flu virus. Are you guys not getting the, the common theme going on here? Regular flu virus. You can keep believing the lies and the hysteria, but the numbers are coming in. It's a regular flu virus. Right. And what, you know, it's funny because the reason why they're having a hard time believing you is because, for example, the exact tweet that Scott Robin tweeted this morning on Vital Vegas was uh, the one thing we know for sure that this is this that th that this virus is more is nothing like the influenza virus at all more than anything ever some weird weird treat like that like he's trying to say this is so different COVID nineteen is nothing like the flu virus oh that's like, exactly what he tweeted like that this is so much worse or something that's what people uh, are saying here's what he said I'll say what he said and then I'll let you respond to it because this is the sort of thing that our that, that our viewers are. Well, confused. what's happening is we're having all these uh, uh, celebs are now really, really promoting it too. They're even doing um, oh, face stuff. masks. They're selling the stuff. They're saying it's for charity, but you guys know, charity is a scam because that's still a business. Charity is a nonprofit business that they only have to give a portion. Um, of their proceeds to whatever thing it is. So whenever you hear charity, don't be thinking that's oh everyone's just so nice and these uh, wonderful servants of thing. Charity is a fucking scam. What they should be doing is giving pe money to the people, not to these charities that are organizations that make tons of money. They are not these people that just care about the welfare of others. No, they're an organization that cares about their welfare um, of their own families and all the people that work there. It's just every, everyone's selfish. Everyone, and, and we are because, you know, we, we, in a way you have to look out for yourself. So you have to be selfish to some level, but some people have taken it to extreme levels now. But you do have to be selfish because you can't take it, care of anyone else if you 
can't take care of yourself, you know. But now we've just taken selfishness to where it's like stomping on other people to get what you need. I never really understood that concept. I've always been okay dying. Like I, I've told people, if you've watched my blogs at all, I've for, for uh, all my life I had many incidences with that, including like when I was five, my mom we were gonna commit suicide, and then I had several suicide attempts, and then my mom killed herself. Okay, here's what here's this, what he said. Here's what he said. This is what people are confused about. Okay. As the internet has made clear, influenza is the least like COVID-19 in the history of ever. Okay, well, uh, yeah, it's just stupid. People, see, all they're doing is just using um, adjectives and, um, and, and big words like that are uh, scary is all I hear from the media about the, this virus. I don't hear uh, numbers saying what they're saying. All I hear is, it's the deadliest virus ever, and the numbers don't say that. Or I hear, it's the worst virus ever, and the numbers don't say that. Or, or more people are dying for this than ever, and the numbers don't say that. So all they're doing is using words, but the actions and the stats there is no do cure. not there's no cure so far uh, the there problem. is no cure for viruses ever you guys how they cure a virus is you get the virus and you get over it that's what the flu shot is is they give you the flu a small dose of it so then you get uh, you build an immunity to it you get immunity. and that's all that's happening here everyone that already had this flu virus is now immune to it if they live through it like tom hanks and his wife and a lot of people um and guess what you guys uh they're finding out that a ton of people had it back in November 2019 and didn't even know and already have an immunity to it. Because it was the regular flu. They got the regular flu. They didn't think anything of it. Okay, so someone says that they'll take a doctor's opinion over yours. And that's a very good point. Because what, what she does is she goes out and researches all doctor's opinions, not just your selected doctors that you're choosing to listen to. And so the doctors she's talking to show the stats. And okay. she's delivering them to you because what you guys do is primarily watch TV. And when you watch TV, that's why you're confused. And she's trying to tell you what's going on. So when you say, right. oh, I'll trust a doctor on TV over you who's not a doctor. Okay, but the doctors are being paid to promote this virus for political reasons. These doctors on TV are paid doctors. They're on TV. I mean, how serious is a doctor that's on TV, you guys? I wouldn't even take a doctor seriously if he's on TV, because when is the last time he's been actually doing medical work? Sounds like he's just on TV all the time, the ones that are on TV. And then this one guy that's been going around, this fucking nutcase, that, uh, covering his face, that guy's a fucking fraud. If you guys can't see he through that guy, that guy wants to be famous. He wants to everyone to think he knows everything. For one thing, most of these doctors, the stuff they learn in school is outdated. What they learned in medical college is outdated. We are in 2020, and you need to be moving forward, and weed is moving forward. Yeah, and everybody. the doctors that promote weed are the doctors you should listen to. Any doctor that does not promote weed is an outdated doctor, and you should not listen to one word that doctor says. Because if they don't say weed is good for you, that doctor is out of his mind. And he is not giving you the right advice because there are medical doctors that are saying weed is one of the best things out there. So which medical doctor are you talking about? Right. We talked to a lot of... So you're going to listen to a doctor who says, go through chemotherapy. That kills you. Chemotherapy Over, kills and, people. And, but he won't let you smoke weed. But he won't let you smoke weed, which is healing people like crazy. So, From medical doctors well, doctor. are doing the investigations, finding out that weed is healing them, while other doctors are still saying you should not do weed and that it's bad for you. I've heard people say their doctor said that weed would kill them and that they shouldn't do it and this and that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And you call that person a doctor? Let me ask you a question. The doctors you're referring to, is your doctor... Does he look healthy? Is he overweight? Under yeah, is your doctor like fit and healthy and feeling great and just super good looking and stuff? Because these weed doctors are. I tell you what, my weed doctor is very handsome and he's fit and he's cool as hell. He's like one of those badass like dudes. I'm like, man, you're just so intimidated <laughs> by him. Worse. But no, seriously, I was like, he is so cool. And um, yeah. And he knows that weed heals people. Right. And that doctor would also, there are a lot of doctors that are saying, look, this whole thing is was overblown out the gate by Wuhan. They said it was 2.5% death rate. 
that freaked everyone out. Right, and then they found out all those numbers were wrong from mm -hmm. China. All wrong. Have you guys not seen numbers. this? Check the news now. The numbers came out that China lied to us, which we already said. That was the whole thing. It was a hoax from China. Those numbers came out. That's on the real news. Yeah, those are numbers. I'm not saying this now. Go look it up. They are saying that uh, the numbers are fabricated from China to scare us. And then now the Democrats have jumped on it because they're trying to get Trump out of office. And Trump has had to go along because the Democrats pushed it so much in the beginning. If you remember, Trump was saying it was a hoax. Now, I'm not for Trump or for the Democrats. They're all terrible leaders. And I think we should not have and any of them running also, our country. Also, you have other people backing you besides... I have the mayor of Las Vegas backing everything I say here about... Um, how uh, we feel in Las Vegas and guess what people are starting to protest in Las Vegas there was a protest yesterday on the strip people are protesting this fucking dickhead Governor Sislek because you know why this is wrong you can say he did it for health or whatever no he allowed construction the entire time during the shutdown so he knew it wasn't a deadly virus because they had four workers test positive at the Raiders Stadium and five test positive at the Resort World and they continued construction Resort World well, finally closed by their own choice, but not by the government, not by Governor Sislek. He allowed them to continue. So you're telling me he, he thought it was a deadly virus? Well, then he did not care about the lives of any construction worker in Nevada. And he thought all of them should die then if you're saying he thought it was a deadly virus. Because he continued construction because they wanted the Raiders Stadium to be built. So which I don't know why, because there's not going to be any tourists here <laughs> for quite a few years. A We're talking about the NFL draft coming here in 2022. I hope we have people back by 2022. To be honest, Vegas will just be probably starting to recover in two years. I mean, this is serious, you guys. It do will not recover overnight, if at ever. Um, most of these businesses will have to uh, sell, so they might come back at, with new owners, but a lot of them are going out of business. They're already talking about well, a lot of them going out of business. Here's an interesting stat. This might be why you see the numbers starting to pop up. Someone just said, $40,000 is given per case to a hospital who has... Yeah, that's the other thing. So they're given money for Only these... Yeah. Uh, for these cases. So like we already said, they can fabricate the numbers because if someone comes in the hospital and had the flu virus at any point during this time, even if they died from any other means, let's say they recovered and then they just died from something else. Let's even say it was a heart attack. I mean, sorry, not heart attack. Car accident. That'd be a better example. Uh, car accident, heart attack too, but car accident would be a better example where it's like nothing to do with your health. Car accident, they're saying, oh, they died from the coronavirus because if they ever got it. So they can say... They had their coronavirus and they died. You see how they can say that and it's still not a lie? They had the coronavirus and they died. But they didn't die from the coronavirus. And they're using those numbers. And those are the numbers that are making the 50,000, which is still just the regular flu virus numbers. So this actually virus was less deadly someone than the regular someone flu that, virus. Someone, someone who works in a hospital and also smokes weed, and he says, don't mess with the two. And that's interesting because, see, the hospital workers... Of course they have to believe it's deadly. Otherwise, you wouldn't go to work. You wouldn't, you know. Well, my dad, my go. dad works in the hospital, too. Yeah, so well, he probably believes it's deadly. I don't fucking know. I don't talk to him very often, to be honest. Because I think he's a buffoon, like all you who believe that this is deadly. Um, and he's all excited because they're getting, like, extra pay at the hospital. He's telling me, oh, we're getting all these supplies and stuff. He was he's all stoked. stoked. New Man, equipment. New ventilators. equipment, all kinds of stuff, he was we're telling me. Guys, we're he's up in Washington State. We're sending ventilators to Ecuador where you worked. Yeah, he was all excited. So, yeah, the, the hospitals are stoked. Are you kidding me? This is, like, awesome for, for hospitals, for grocery stores, for, um, like, Amazon, for, you know, uh, for uh, one other thing, anything that did uh, like delivery, uh, pizza, pizza delivery, anything you know, food delivery. This has been amazing Here's for the people. They're working. They have more money than ever. But for everyone else that Governor Sislek <coughs> didn't deem essential uh, when he deemed construction essential, which I have no idea. You cannot tell me anything in construction that could not wait a month or two. I don't care what project it is. Unless literally some, like, something where it was but construction, this would not be the case. But I'm thinking of like, this would be more like if there was an incident where you had something busting. But in construction, that usually wouldn't be the case. Construction is building. It's not usually repairing. So normally you would only need repairs done during this kind of crisis if it was really a deadly virus. You would not need new things being built. 
when we don't even know if Vegas is going to recover at all. I mean, these casinos are going to be going out of business like crazy. People, th people think, I'm so irritated right now, I'm getting that. Bruh. People think the casinos will recover because they make billions of dollars. But do you understand when you make billions of dollars, that means you have billions of dollars in bills. And even if your place is closed, a large portion of your bills are still coming through. Even if you've laid off uh, some of your employees, well, a lot of them, they have to pay um, unemployment now for those people as well. Um, and there's still so many fees. There's still things they got to run. The casinos are still technically open. They have people that have to go in. They keep them clean. They got to run the toilets. They got it. You can't just let a building like that sit static for uh, 30 to 45 to however long days you can't. I don't know if you guys, I was in real estate for quite a few years. Uh, I did like four years in real estate um, and before here in Vegas. And vacant houses, it's a big problem um, because... When a house sits, everything gets messed up, all the piping and all that stuff. So they're having to, like, I'm sure have people go in, run the toilets, run the things, making sure everything isn't getting, like, where uh, you can have where the piping gets all messed up because if you're not having the flow of the water, things mold, things rust. Um, so they have to run all these things whether they have people or not. Otherwise, we would come, we would open up and the place would be, like, cobwebs and uh, rust everywhere and stuff, you know, and dust, and, and they can't have that um because they do want to try to save these places and it's getting harder and harder each day as they continue to try to landscape to keep it nice to do these things that you know to try to literally have vegas not fall to shambles i mean they allowed landscaping because they didn't want this place to be run over it would look ridiculous I mean, it was, I, I, that's another thing. Landscaping is not technically essential in my mind, but the governor just like didn't want our city to look like it looked as shambles that it should because that's what it is right now. It is in shambles, but instead they're keeping it pretty so it doesn't appear to be in shambles. But it should be overrun with weeds and everything because that's how what's really happening to this place. Things are going out of business, boarded up things. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but then they're still keeping it pretty, you know, sweep the sidewalks and stuff. But yeah, people are starting to protest here in Vegas, a lot of protests, um, because this is just ridiculous. And the mayor, she wants the city back open. She's saying the casinos will not recover if they, I mean, each day it's getting harder and harder. Less and less of them will be able to open. They're already talking about only like one or two opening in the beginning. Like it's going to be such a tiny trickle and some of them may never open again. And people go, oh, who cares? It's just entertainment. Well, you know what? You will care those times when you want to have that birthday party, that bachelorette or bachelor party, that, um, uh, you know, wedding, uh, whatever the festivities that come here, conventions, you know, the, uh, a concert, a Raiders game, um, uh, a concert at the Raiders Stadium. They're having some big concerts come in there now, you know, a hockey game. All these things... You're going to want Vegas to still be here. Even if you don't gamble, it's a beautiful place. Some people come just to take the photos and look at the casinos. The People still want again. that. And like, it's going to go away. And Governor Sislek has the power to, to let it like open back up. And he's not. And there thing. is no deadly virus. Here, here's the latest thing. So the Republicans, this is why it's going to turn into a dismantling. Mitch McConnell is, is going to... Uh, is pushing the Republicans to allow the states to declare bankruptcy. Oh, which, geez. in that case, then now, you don't got to pay your bills to the states, which that's, if they do that, then Steve's little plan goes out the window. Right now, it's illegal. They can't declare bankruptcy. You always owe the state. But if they allow that to happen, then people go, oh, states will be like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't, who knows? It's just getting all weird. It's getting crazy. And here's the, it's crazy here, um, so uh, people have had a problem with Governor Sislek for a long time because he was supposed to give all the money from the marijuana funds to the schools, and he did not. And he bought himself a private plane. The guy's a fraud. And so this is not the first thing he has done. They had um, the teachers protested a couple years back because he did not give the funding from the marijuana to the education because we have some of the worst schools in uh, the nation here in Nevada. I didn't grow up here, luckily. I'm from California because the schooling here is terrible. And I can see that from, most, from some of the people I've met uh, living here that went to some of the education here. No, I'm just using, no, uh, but there are some oddballs here, but there's oddballs everywhere. But no, they really do have some of the worst schooling in the nation. 
And the marijuana fund, since we're making billions of dollars here in Nevada, we're paying into it. We pay our huge tax on our legal weed, and I thought it was going to the schools. And I was very mad to find out that it was actually just going to Governor Sisolak's private plane and in his fat pockets. Um, so... There, there's already been a lot of issues with him and then um, here's the thing that he allowed construction so no matter what you guys say about the virus you can say it's deadly or not if he allowed construction during this process then he believed it was not deadly or if he did then he did not care about the lives of any construction worker in Nevada. Those are your only options. It cannot be any other option because if he allowed construction then he didn't care about the workers lives if he thought it was deadly. Or you can say he knew it wasn't deadly, so that's why he allowed construction because he wanted his Raiders Stadium okay. to be built. Someone says they're, they're all saying you're, uh, you know, going off on how the mayor is lost her noodle. She's become unhinged going off the interview they saw, which she probably. Did. She's very upset because you guys, Vegas is being destroyed each day, and no one is taking this seriously, and it's over a regular flu virus. She is distraught. Her and her husband have been part of this city for so long. I think at least like forty years or something. I don't even know the name. long time. And her husband was mayor before her. That's Oscar Goodman. Um, if you go to the Plaza uh, Hotel, Oscars. That um, restaurant, that's for Oscar Goodman. He was the mayor of Las Vegas for many, many years. And then his wife became mayor, who is Carolyn Goodman. They are wonderful here in uh, Vegas. They run the downtown, the Fremont Street Experience. That's kind of their thing. That's their jurisdiction down there, the, the downtown. And that will not recover. She is distraught because those casinos don't have as much money as the Strip even. They're smaller. And those guys, most of them are not coming back. And she is very upset about this because she loves Las Vegas. And people are calling her crazy and she lost her noodle and a drunk and all these things just because she is passionate about the fact that the city she has been mayor for, her and her husband for so many years. For uh, how many years was it, Jerry Rich, you know? Uh, mayor? She's been mayor for about eight years. No, but her husband. Oh, since 99. Since 99. Since 1999. And they are distraught because if you live in Las Vegas, you should be distraught. I cry every time I go by a casino right now. I'll be on the bus and I'll start bawling when I see the South Point or when I went down the Strip. Well, I don't even go there right now because it upsets me so much. When And we also can't afford it because we don't have a car, so we have to Uber. But um, when we did go down there, I was in tears the whole time because Vegas is not going to recover for a very long time, if ever. It's what's going to become something different. Like, what we knew is gone. And that makes me sad because I've been here since 2013 and it's been our home. And if you're not upset and you live in Las Vegas, then you're not listening to your feelings because you should be very upset. They just destroyed our city for a regular flu virus, for one that kills 50,000, which the regular flu virus kills every year. All we did was track a regular flu virus and it killed the people that were already sick that were going to die from the flu or from the common okay. cold or anything they like that. They're, they're all saying she wants to open the city without a plan. There, you don't need a plan because there wasn't a deadly flu virus. The, the, there's all giants pack, I mean, packed every day. And there was construction the entire time during this whole thing. There, the there, there, does, there is no deadly the flu virus, so there is no it. need to have phases they or plans. Have. The only reason why the Democrats are doing that is because they want you to believe they didn't just lie to you. So they're pretending that it was a deadly virus, even though the numbers are not saying that. It the numbers are showing. Showing 50,000 people died, which is the regular flu virus. The Dems now are doing this phase approach and plans because they want you guys to think they didn't just punk the whole country. Also, you need to wake up. Also, they discovered that many people out west had already had it from the Chinese. That yeah, came to they Vegas. already had it because in Chinese November been to Vegas all throughout 2019, and people are all recovering. Yes. You guys, the other thing is people are recovering. I don't know why we would ever stop this over a virus that people are recovering from. More people have recovered than died. Way more have recovered than died. Like hundreds of thousands have recovered. And 50,000 have died. 
So that is not a deadly virus. That is a virus with a very good recovery ratio. And no virus has a cure, you morons. It's called getting immunity from it. You have to get the virus to be immune from it. That's what a flu shot is, is they give you part of the flu. And then that's why you get sick often when you get the flu virus. There is no immunity or drug or pill or cure for a virus. So this is no different than any flu virus ever. When I was a little girl, I remember the first time, the reason, one of the big reasons I don't even go to the doctor is because when I was a little girl, I was about seven years old, I got the worst virus I've ever had in my entire life. Way worse than this coronavirus from me, what I hear what the symptoms are. This was the nastiest thing. I was snotting uncontrollably all day long. Constant, constant. I'd go through boxes of tissues. Um, I, I couldn't speak. I, it was like I, I was throwing up. I was so sick. The sickest I've ever been. This went on for like two weeks. I was a young, young girl. They take me to the doctor. And the doctor says, you have a virus. I cannot do anything for you. And I, as a little girl, said, why would I ever go to the doctor if I am so sick right now and you tell me you can't do anything for me? Like, as a little girl, I was like, mom, can they? She said, no, they can't do it. It's a virus. All you can do is recover or die from it. And this one is only killing people that are really sick. Everyone else is recovering and now they have immunity to it. That's what happens with a virus. There is no pill. There is no antibacterial soap for a virus. What you do with your antibacterial soap is you take all the good bacteria off of your hands so now you don't fight the viruses as well. So this idea of hand sanitizer and soap and water and all this crap 20, 20 oh. seconds non-stop uh, like this crap give it you just took all your good bacteria that was going to help you with the virus you dumb fucks really good, really good point but here's another example everyone says well in any case I wouldn't want to take my chances and get the virus well yeah no but look hold on no one enjoys the chicken pox do they right but you got it and you lived didn't you and then right. you're immune. And everyone is living from this virus unless they had pre-existing conditions. Like pre-existing bad health conditions. Those are the only people that are dying. So the very sick elderly, not even the healthy elderly. We got the conception that like, okay, for one thing, um, we've seen so many elderly recover. I don't know if you guys have been checking this. It's funny. They don't want to ever talk about the recoveries. But if you look at the numbers, there's hundreds of thousands. And the old people are getting it and recovering. It's the very sick. And then um, the only young people that are uh, dying are the ones that they have a very, very poor immune deficiency already. Like they have some kind of illness already. Already. No one healthy is dying. Everyone healthy is recovering. Like they do when they get the regular flu every year. Every year a regular flu goes around the world. And we get a flu shot. Some do, some don't. But, you know, that's always something. Go get your flu shot. Go get it from Walgreens. You know, I got the flu shot. What the flu shot Please is... Run for president. I sure will. <laughs> Put me on the ballot. Uh, <laughs> maybe that. <laughs> That's from smoking weed. No, I'm not sick. Well, so I saw this funny okay, thing. Hold on. They're saying that, but all these doctors are dying that were on the front lines of the hospital. Well, they were probably very unhealthy doctors that were already very sick. Not good. Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're healthy. People get this misconception that I mean, doctors are healthy. Years old. For one thing, most doctors I've met are old and overweight and not healthy and, and the coffin themselves and stuff. And you know, when you're in there, oh, excuse me, you know, and they have real like raspy voices, Smoke smokers. Yeah, yeah, almost like you knew they were smokers. because they're, they're definitely drinkers. Yeah, drinkers, they got that raspy voice. I'm like, you're not healthy. Are you okay, doc? You're giving me advice? No, thank you. I've never taken advice from a doctor unless it was from a weed doctor. Um, because, and even before weed was legal, um, I knew, I I realized, like I said early on with that, but then um, my family has been in the medical industry. Um, my grandmas were both nurses, and then my dad, you know, is an x-ray tech. And then I worked for two doctors. I uh, opened a clinic uh, with them in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, I did a lot of jobs before <laughs> Las Vegas. People don't know that about me. But I opened this knee injection clinic with these doctors. 
and I've had a lot of experience. Yeah, I'm really glad we have you to give advice to everyone. Yeah. I have a lot of experience being around doctors. I've also met a lot of doctors in my current industry. I have so many doctor clients. Okay, so here's somebody, Kate. Okay, this is getting on the issue that McCarthy was always talking about. Someone says, vaccines are the worst things for you. It's better to get the fucking actual virus. Yeah, no, um, that's always true because a lot of times with the vaccine, it might not, it, it might not be enough to really like, uh, you you don't get to the experience to build your immunity. You know, like it's uh, they don't give you enough. Like you need more in a sense. You know, get 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 the whole flu, go through it. And then you're always better if you experience the whole thing. Like people, um, you know how like with antibiotics, people will stop their antibiotics early. If you do that, you actually just made the, your um, uh, whatever you had your because uh, antibiotics would be for bacteria, not for viruses. But you just made them stronger if you didn't finish your antibiotics. And people do that often. They think they feel better, so they stop their antibiotics. But if you don't carry it out through the whole thing. <laughs> You just made it worse. And so, um, yeah, sometimes with the flu shot, you might just get a little bit, but you didn't get enough to really give yourself the full immunity of the um, action game. Because once you have it, get the immunity, you're not going to get it again. But you know what, a good point is, is like, uh, people say, well, where do you learn all this stuff? Like, oh, where do I learn it? Well, like I old? said, oh, okay, like I said, my background, well, okay, I am 35. Now, it's not super old, but that's also not super young. Some people think I'm 20. I got this compliment the other day. I thought, wow, must be good lighting in here. Shush. Okay. Anyways, I'm 35. But the thing and, is that, that the educate... Like, but, no, but, but I'll get into... Yeah. Uh, up, so. but the, the, what they're wanting to no, know I is, know, like, no, but listen. you so smart? No, no, I know. I'm going to get into that. But I wanted to first say I'm not 20. Someone what thought. school did you go to? Okay, so I'm 35, so... Uh, I've been around a little bit, but uh, I did not. Um, I did not go to a college. So people automatically would think I went to some college, but I didn't finish college. But oh, what do you know? But here's the thing: I was in the Air Force for four years. Um, when I was 17, I, I graduated high school year early. Went in the Air Force for four years. So I experienced there. Then I went into real estate. Then I worked for these doctors, um, and then. Uh, I, we came to Vegas, and then now I'm an entertainer here in Vegas. So, um, and being an entertainer in Vegas, I have met so many people uh, for what I do, and I, I've met so many doctors. I would say I have more doctor clients than anything else. I mean, doctors are one of my biggest clients. And um, so... Uh, that would be a little service. bit of my uh, of my history. So no, I do not have the uh, formal education that these doctors would have of going to college. But I'll tell you what I do have is I am a researcher. I go online and I research everything. And when I was sick, because I was bulimic for 15 years, I had to figure out how to cure myself because no doctor had the answers for me. They didn't give me the answers I wanted. They want to put you in these treatment facilities that cost a fortune. For one thing, I couldn't afford it. I had a girl one time try to pay for my treatment and we found out it was a thousand dollars a week and we, she said sorry i give you one one week and uh, that was very nice of her but um it's, it's it's so much money so i had to figure out how to cure myself and so i did countless hours because for one thing i was sick for an entire year um and luckily we had savings that's what we ended up using most of our savings on we had saved up with my job i was able to save when vegas was good but then we spent most of it on the year that i had to get healthy and i did work but it was so sporadic because i was sick all the time and I scoured the internet and that's how I learned about nutrition about all this stuff. and I've tried all the diets too but I mean I scoured there that's when I learned about the gluten and the dairy and all the things that I uh, tell people about now is I read and read and I read every like conflicting articles you right, can't so just read you can't just read one side someone you, says you gotta well, who, read. who reads and believes everything they read no you gotta read from both sides so I read everything I read people saying this is good people saying this is bad about everything and then I tried it myself so with the food, I tried everything. So I read things that were totally wrong. I got so many bad advice. I, we tried amaranth because Cindy Crawford said amaranth was a good idea to eat this grain. Terror. Oh, my gosh. Worst idea we've what ever done. Gluten? Um, gluten. Oh, gluten you should not eat. I mean, it's really – gluten should really just be kind of – anything doughy. It, okay, here's a good rule of thumb. You think of how the stuff is going to digest in your body. So if anything is sticky and gluey and doughy and um, pasta-y and <laughs> you like that word pasta-y and like, you know, 
uh, but, um, peanut buttery think of like when a dog gets peanut butter I guess <laughs> your dog peanut butter well that stuff has to go in your inside so anything like that is never going to be that good for your body just a good rule of thumb but then gluten has so many issues we were um, that was the first thing we cut out and we found such an improvement right away by just cutting out gluten and Jedi Rich's dad died of cancer um, several years back and he unfortunately had got throat cancer and they did didn't know at the time uh, I would like I know now people still would the doctor would still give him this is another reason why I don't like doctors uh, I'm not all doctors but like I said the ones that are giving this bad advice Jerry Rich's father had only had cancer for how many years Jerry Rich uh, how long? Four years? Four years. So a very short time so he got that throat cancer and then the doctor put him on an all sugar liquid diet and his cancer just went just flourished through his whole body and he died within four years so Sugar feeds cancer, you guys. That's what I keep saying. So going on an all-sugar diet is the worst advice you could ever give a pe cancer patient. An all-liquid diet, worst idea ever. Now, it's tough because he had throat cancer, so I'm sure it was difficult to eat, but that was That's the worst point. There's a confusion here. I idea. And when Jedi Rich's father was on his deathbed, guess what the last of he didn't. He was never someone that really... Oh, he cared about he, he was not health conscious and he said avoid gluten that was his the last dying words to Jedi Rich because you get clarity when you die and I held on to that I we for a long time still ate gluten but I always thought about interesting that his father's last words when he's not someone that was in the nutrition or anything last advice to his son before he dies is avoid gluten so I started researching and I researched and I researched and I found out that most of my symptoms were from gluten so then you can just go down the list oh wait I have that oh wait I have that oh wait and then try it for yourself you don't have to listen to me take out the gluten for a week or two see if you notice some differences and then you'll believe yourself that's the thing you do your research then you do empirical research so you do online research read the stuff from the everyone all, all varying uh, sides, you know, so you get a rounded uh, viewpoint. And then try it yourself. If it's something you can try, then you'll know for sure. And that's what we did. So empirical means you try it yourself. Right. And someone said that the non-gluten bread is actually worse for you. Oh, yeah. No, you got to really just avoid any of that. That's what I'm saying. That's when I was trying to say the example. There's no gluten-free options. What it is is you have to avoid anything that would be a gluten sort of thing. So... Here's the thing. Every time they make another thing where they say, oh, now this is gluten-free, but we're making it with something else, now you're just going to have another issue coming down the road because it's still that artificial stuff. Any of that stuff is the problem. What you have to eat is real food, food from Earth, as in real organic food, like real animals, real vegetables, and a very small amount of fruit. Fruit is high in sugar. People think fruit is so good for you in very small amounts. It has good antioxidants and things in very, very small amounts, like three berries and a half a banana maybe for your day. That would be a lot of fruit. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fruit. And people go, what? I put barrels in a smoothie. Yeah, that is not, that's way too much fruit. And that's way too much sugar. And that's what feeds things like cancer and these diseases. And that's what happened with Jack Rich's father. They put him on an all smoothie diet and his cancer just spread like wildfire. And in four years, he went from healthy as, as an ox, the guy's doing hiking and he was a photographer uh, here in Vegas. His throat starts hurting, goes to the hospital. They say, you have cancer. And in four years, dead. Um, because they put him on that sugar thing uh it, it was an all sugar and at the time they thought that was right and his doctor would still recommend that and i'm like that is so ridiculous and um so he said check food so i started researching that and that was the first thing so we cut out the gluten then we cut out the dairy um then we switched to organics and then we realized to avoid GMOs, which is kind of with organics. Organics are technically supposed to be gmo free but i like to also if you can get that non-gmo project verify that makes you feel even better um and then you uh we the last thing we cut out we cut out alcohol too and the last thing was caffeine and that's what most people don't want to cut out and that's what's causing a lot of issues for people and they don't realize it they think their caffeine is their savior they think oh i lose weight with caffeine but actually you don't caffeine actually makes you gain weight 
I know, I know, no one wants to admit, but you guys believe me. I was the biggest coffee alcoholic you'd ever meet in your entire life. Like, people that know me from my past, I was like, all I consumed was coffee for the most part. Like, I didn't even usually eat. I just would do like frappuccinos and stuff. Like, that was my, you know, for many years, I like, I lived on coffee beverages. So, so, so coffee is a big issue. It's a big issue. And people take it very lightly. People take it very lightly, and it's probably what's causing most of your weight gain because you're not accounting for that as well. So most people are maybe watching other things, but then they're just thinking coffee or caffeine, any caffeine too. Tea, all the same. Don't think tea's any better. Someone it's the said, caffeine that's the issue. You. Excuse me. Someone just said they drink 10 cups of coffee a day. I did that too. I was drinking, we were making 10 pots of coffee a day. We had one of those, I, I can't remember the name, Chip Chimex or something, I can't. What are they called? It was just really cool. They're from like they're French, um, but they were like the, these glass, uh, these beautiful. They make this nice coffee where it's this thing and it's in this glass bottle, and then you just drip the coffee th in this funnel through, and it makes it's like the best coffee you could ever have. And we started doing that towards the end. We were making ten pots of those things a day, and we were doing organic coffee too because it was we had we were doing organic, so we'd done everything else, and we we're like, oh, let's just do organic coffee. Mm -mm. Uh, I mean, you can do it if you don't want to be your healthiest and if you want to uh, struggle with your weight. So, so you know, and you saw this too. Like, you'd see these people, these models with that were looking thin, and they just said, I can't imagine you being overweight. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. For a lot of my life, I tended to be thinner because I usually had eating disorders. So, if anything, I was doing things like anorexia, taking laxatives, and bulimia. So, often I was very thin but in 2018 um when i stopped bulimia i started to put on weight now i was still pretty thin because i had been bulimic most of my life but if i had continued down that road i would have put on a lot of weight. remember that Jai Rich? Yeah. we had i was like what's going on because as soon as i stopped my bulimia i was like <laughs> my weight was just every day i was just putting on more weight and i got up to probably I right now weigh about 110 pounds, and I probably in 2018 was about 130 or 40 pounds, you know, so I had put on uh, about a good, uh, you know, 20, 20, 30 pounds after that, stopping that's bulimia. That's coming in from, you can, you can call me, yes, you can call me, yes. <laughs> okay, you can call me, yes, nice, thank you so much, thank you for the, I love the hearts, it's so fun, so nice, you guys, it's so funny too because, you know, those ones I think do cost money, but most of them are free, and people don't want to give hearts, but it's like, it's so fun to get them, and I appreciate anyone that does, just give a little tap. So, uh, we used to watch Brie Olsen, I don't know if any of you ever watched Brie Olsen when you're on Periscope, she was like the Periscope queen back in the day, Brie she don't do it best. anymore, but she used to, and she was teaching best. everyone how to do, like, where you just do it, like, like you put your finger on the thing, and you just go like this, like, nonstop, she wanted her fans to do that, so it was like, because back then she thought she could make money, but then she found out they weren't even going to pay her, and she was like, she had so many hearts and so many it was insane and they didn't even approve it was pretty rude because she's a sex worker it's kind of lame but um anyways i felt bad for her because she worked really hard for several years and then because they were going to do this the program where eventually you could get paid oh tell me about brie olsen that's the one with charlie brie olsen is the porn star that was with charlie sheen she was one of the goddesses remember how he had the two goddesses one of them was brie olsen yeah and she uh, is no longer a porn star. She actually quit, right? She quit before she was with Charlie Sheen. Like, I think she had quit porn, went up touring with Charlie Sheen. He was doing some weird tour thing during that time. Like a comedy tour. Right? Comedy tour. Yeah, and she was touring with him and the other girls, some girl named Natalie. We know her whole story because we used to watch her Periscope. And then that whole, uh, it, they weren't even together very long, but she became very more famous because of that. She was more famous with that than with the porn. She, you know, was pretty famous with porn, but then she got catapulted where everyone oh. knew her. Um, she was on Howard Stern and stuff uh, often about the Charlie Sheen stuff. She even went on there when he uh, announced Sarah that he was really. HIV positive. She was all freaking out. She was even with her when he was HIV positive it turned out but she wanted to c create all this drama and then she looked like a fool she went on some night the night one of them nightly shows and then they found out she was lying because she it was yeah. not true and then they didn't air it wow. <laughs> then, but anyways enough about her yeah but um but we used to watch her but what was we talking about before that uh, we were, people want to know how you feel about... Oh, no, no, we were talking, were talking about my weight. Oh, yeah. no, actually, they were asking me. So I was, yeah, about uh, 30 pounds heavier about two years ago. 
And uh, as soon as we cut out the coffee, the weight just started dropping because we were already on organics and we were doing gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free. We just do regular food, like the original food from Earth. So we do what we eat is organic beef, organic greens, and organic garlic. We do just that. But hey, that's pretty extreme. So I would just rec- recommend doing organic uh meat of some sort, like real animal meat. Um, I know the whole vegan thing, we'll get into that later, but, um, and then, um, real vegetables and real fruit, but no package, nothing like none of this fake stuff, none of this pastas and rices, like all that stuff's garbage. Just really just get your stuff from the, the meat protein, the veggies, and the fruit. We don't need any of these grains. That was a misconception. They did that because they were cheaper and there was people couldn't afford the meat back in the day. So they said, hey, eat more grains. But now they're finding that, that everyone's having so many issues with grains. So we avoid any kind of grains. We don't even do rice. So someone asked a simple question. Mm-hmm. What is organic meat? Organic just means food that is from, I don't I don't know what they'll say is the organic if you looked up in the definition, but I'm going to tell you what organic is. is it's it's food from Earth. It's food that doesn't have hormones, steroids, pesticides, GMOs, which are genetically modified organisms. It's food that has not been tainted by society in the sense of they have taken food and they put it in labs. They started modifying the seeds to make them bigger, uh, last longer, do all these modifications they thought would be good for society, but they're finding that now people are having more obesity and more uh, diseases and disorders, which is directly related to the food. It hasn't fully come out because they don't want to admit it just like with this virus. But if you start doing organics, you'll say, whoa, all of my diseases and disorders and aches and pains are going away. Everything was because of the food. And that's why I did the research first, but then I tried it myself. And now I'm telling you guys, I was sick. I was really, really sick. In 2015, I almost died from my bulimia. I couldn't walk up the stairs. Jairich would have to help me to get up the stairs. And then I would have to lay on the couch for a good 30 minutes because I, I couldn't breathe and my heart would be beating so fast by it. I, I couldn't I couldn't get air. Um, uh, in my bulimia, it was my heart was starting to give out or something. It was complications from being bulimic for 15 years, so I had to quit. But I was so sick that I didn't know what to do. Like I, my bulimia was so extreme that I didn't stick my finger down my throat. I just threw up. I ate and then it. I would just throw up. Like I would go to the toilet and like. So what happened was, I would involuntary throw up. So when I stopped, I had to just sit there and try to like hold back throwing up for a good several months and it was horrible like cause every time I wanted to eat my body would want to throw up because it had gotten so used to it and I scoured the internet and I was sick and sick and sick and everything made me sick that I ate like I would bloat and I didn't know what it was, and it turned out it was candida overgrowth. You can look up candida overgrowth. Most people are struggling with candida overgrowth right now, too, due to sugary foods, due to antibiotics, due to all this processed crap and uh, packaged stuff we're eating, um, to the GMOs. All this stuff is ca- causing candida overgrowth, um, dairy, all these things. So candida is a fungus that everyone has in their body, and when they're functioning fine, you know, and they're not uh, too many, then we all get along and they're hunky-dory. They live off of sugar and they uh, live in our fat cells. But what happens when we eat wrong, then they reproduce and there's too many of them and they want sugar. So what happens is you get really, really intense cravings from these guys that are very strong. Fungi are very, very interesting uh, creatures on this planet. Our crap is overgrown. Person has a question. Mm -hmm. So... Is bulimia a mental health issue or a physical? Um, it's both. Uh, it generally comes from issues. Like, my eating disorder started, like, when my dad left. When, well, also, I had issues before that, too, because my mom wanted to kill herself when I was five. Me and my mom were going to kill her. I just was going to do it with her. She was going to kill herself, and I was going to do it with her uh, when I was five. So I had some issues, and then my dad left when I was six. Um right after that after my mom did that stunt and so uh my dad left the next year and then uh so I started eating this my mom part of her depression was because she had eating disorders 
So she taught me very young. Thank you, Smoker Eater, for the super hearts. To be anorexic. My mom was not believing. She was very anorexic. She just didn't eat. And as a young child, she would just say, no, you cannot eat that. Do not eat that. Joy will only eat this. Joy will eat this tiny amount. No, I can't eat this. That's bad. You know, so I just was, I mean, we did not eat like sweets or anything. You know, my mom would allow for like one, but it was like, um, but unfortunately, she ate a lot of fruit. She thought fruit was good. So it turned out we were getting a lot of sugar, but she thought that was healthy. And that's what a lot of people think. But, um, yeah, I was very much, as a young child, you were not allowed to have, like, cake or things like that. I was like, uh-uh. So um, when I became bulimic, I was like, whoa, cookies and cake? I've never had this before. And I ate everything. And that's a bulimic, so you eat everything and then throw up. Now, what happens generally is you don't start with bulimia. You start with an eating disorder because you got issues, and mine was, you know, I had daddy issues. Um, my dad left, and my mom had food issues, so that didn't help either. Um, and so it started with anorexia, anorexia, and then eventually led to bulimia because you eventually get tired of not eating, or people get on your case for not eating. So I even became vegan during this time. So I became vegan in 1995. I was, what, 10? I was 10. I became vegan because that was part of my anorexia time. I found out that if I was vegan, it'd be easier to avoid eating because no one was vegan at the time. And I was like, oh, I'll make it difficult on my mom. I'll say, oh, mom, I'm vegan. I can't eat that. Because everyone was harassing me for not eating because I'd been kind of anorexic for a couple years. And even though my mom was, she, you know, she get shit from other people. Your daughter's anorexic, so she's all oh, you gotta eat, you know, kind of. She didn't really push me too much because she was anorexic herself. Hey, someone has a question about. Uh, we'll come back to this, but uh, they have a question about. Adderall and ADHD. What do you think about taking that after the age of 30, like in your adult? Oh, I don't think you should take it ever, actually. Um, I think people should uh, take CBDs um, if you're struggling with any kind of attention dis uh, attention deficit disorder, you know, um, then uh, what's happening is usually it's due to too much sugar, too. It's a very high sugar, and probably people are the caffeine. If you cut out the sugar and caffeine, that would make a big difference, and then uh, CBDs. If you don't want to smoke weed, the CBDs, and that would help so much with the ADHD, with the um, any of those things. Oh, you know what? Also, it's helping with their finding with autism. My brother, they were giving him. My brother's autistic, so I have one brother that died, and I have a sister, and I have a brother that's autistic. Um, and my autistic brother, they were giving him weed for a long time, and that was that was the best thing because they had given him so much medicine and all kinds of pills and things, um, and weed was the oh, best really? thing. Yeah, they someone gave said, it to him in pills. Someone says a lot of NFL players are taking Adderall now. The problem with Adderall is it's speed, you guys. It's speed. Explain Adderall is speed. If you guys don't know this, Adderall is. is speed and meth. And meth, meth, Adderall, and speed are the same thing. They're just varying levels. Like, Adderall is a smaller level than meth. That's why people don't, it's not and as. Coffee, too, is a stimulant. And coffee is also, yeah. Very, very mild. Very, very, very mild. But they're all stimulants and they're all, um, you know, they're, they give you, you know, that speedy thing. But um, meth and um, Adderall and. Um, what was the other uh, coffee? Uh, no, what was the other one we just said? Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we're talking about speed. No, but listen, but listen, oh, speed, sorry, speed. Yeah. Those are all the same. And people think Adderall, since it comes from uh, the doctor, see, this is where the misconception occurs that if it came from your doctor, that it's healthy. But most of the pharmaceuticals are worse than any street drug. And especially the things like the Oxycontins, oh, those are worse than worse those than are heroin. worse than heroin, you guys. They are heroin, but, but they're worse. worse than if someone was shooting up heroin. They're stronger than that, and also you can take more because you can just take a pill. That's why people are do overdosing. It's harder to overdose by shooting up. So I've never shot up. I don't know this by experience. I'm just saying it's actually that's harder for people because when they shoot up, they do you know their amount and then they're dead. Pills. You could take a lot of pills, and that's what's happening. People are ODing on those pills like crazy. So just because it came from your doctor does not mean it's not meth or speed or heroin. It's exactly the same thing. It's just in pill form. Yeah, like these junkies. So no, I do not think you should take Adderall. Unless I, unless I think you should take Adderall as much as I think you should do meth and take speed. Big Pharma 
has been bringing the hardest drugs to the street for over 100 years. Someone said. Yeah, you guys, I don't know if you've ever tried to buy a pharmaceutical drugs illegally. They are the most expensive thing on the street. It is not easy, and they are expensive. We one time had a pill. It was $80 for the one pill we paid, um, and it was because Jairus was having a ton of pain back then, and so um, and we didn't have a doctor or health care, so we got we got these from these guys. They were, I think they were Roxy's or something, I want to say. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They were the most insane thing. You would you would take a tiny little sliver off of the pill because it was so strong. And this is what they were giving people. You know, um, when I went to the VA one time because I have uh, I have VA benefits, but Jedi Rich doesn't have any kind of benefits. So whenever he got sick, we didn't have options. But I could go to the VA, which I they told me now I can't because I have a marijuana uh, card. I have a medical marijuana card. So they told me I lost my VA benefits. I'm like, good. I don't fucking care. I'm not going to see you guys anymore. Because guess what? The one time I went, they gave me, I had I had this infection. My face swelled up. I don't know what happened. I think it was like this ingrown hair that just, so it was the craziest thing. I've never had something. It was, this was in 2012. Swelled up. So I go to the VA hospital in Portland, Oregon. That's when we were living there. And those guys give me Dilaudid, which I didn't know what that was. Apparently, those are extremely strong pain pills. Like, so strong that when they gave it to me, I started throwing up. It was so bad. And then I got so sick. And then I broke in a rash from head to toe. But this was until I left the hospital. So they sent me on my merry way with my pill, my bottle of these Dilaudid's. I didn't even know this thing. I'm like delirious. Oh, God. So Jerry just helped me out of the. So you took a doctor's advice. And then, and this is. So and then, so I call uh, the next day. I go, oh, I have a rash. I call them back. And they're like, oh, come in the next day. And I'm like, okay, well, it's pretty serious. <laughs> All right. So I come in the two days later. I had a rash from head to toe, like covered. I have it on Facebook. I think there's still some photos. If you guys go check out my Facebook, it's funny. And. She go, oh my gosh! I didn't know you meant like that kind of. I was covered head to toe with this, and that's from going to the doctor, and that was legal. They're giving me them things. Those are stronger than any other street drug I've ever done in my entire life, and I've never broken out a rash from a drug. That was insane, and that's what they're just giving out. They're not giving out to uh, people as much now, but the VA still does. The VA does, because it's like, oh, you're a veteran? All right, here you go. You served in the war, so take these. Which, that's, it's nice that they're getting the things for the pain, but the problem is those things are highly addictive, and they never are going to, if you have permanent pain, you have to do something like weed and fix your diet, because those will, you'll never get better by taking pain pills. Pain pills only numb the pain, and they make it worse when you come off of them. You feel way worse. Oh my gosh, so we did just a little bit of taking pills for a very short time. It was only maybe two months, and it took like several months to recover from those two months of doing it. You're like, oh, jeez, Louise, the recovery is way worse. And some people die trying to get off of pain pills. They're stronger than most street drugs where you actually have to be weaned off. Like there's um, Dr. Drew used to do a show uh, called, uh, what was that show called? Celebrity Rehab, I think it was called. Someone says, thank you for continuing to serve one veteran to another. Oh. They, apparently they continue to consider this service. Um, yeah, uh, Celebrity Rehab, they, when the people would come in on the pills, they would have to, uh, Dr. Drew would have to medically make sure to wean them off because you can die from the, um, from the withdrawals from these pills, from the doctors and things like Adderall are very, um, strong, like, um, you're going to be so used to taking that that when you come off, you're going to feel very, very depressed is what most people feel when they come off of Adderall. That's why they continue on it. most, And that's why most people have continued on most of their life. Like They took it as a child. There's a lot of people that stay on it. I know um, an actress, Kristen Bell, is on Adderall. She's been on that since she was a child. She talks about that, and she struggles with major depression because every time I think she tries to come off of it, she gets goes and gets depressed because you get so used to whatever so that. Side yeah, the side. Also, it's a side effect of the withdrawals, but but you're also just used to whatever that pill gave you, the euphoria or whatever people experience. Um, usually, euphoria. Some people, it's calmness because they. Are, are, are super erratic so that when they take it, it comes down that's what for the ADHD people um that's usually the cases ADD and ADHD both um 
you know, they take the outer roll for both those. And uh, the best thing would be weed for everyone. And, you know, it's becoming legal in more and more states. And, you know, if you're in a state that it's illegal, I would either recommend moving or doing it illegally. <laughs> you know, don't say I told you to, but because it's that important. Well, and it's, said, and, know, it's yeah. and it's and states are making it legal. So if you're in a state that's illegal, it's really not fair that they're really behind the times. And the federal government, I think, is about to make it legal. It sounds like that's kind of the next... Uh, term that they kind of that's probably kind of the way they're hoping to kind of probably do it that not way. Pu- because well, they're like 30-something states now well they'll probably just take it it should never have been on their illegal list they'll take it off their illegal yeah, list yeah here's the thing you guys weed was put on the list by Nixon and he put it as one of the top drugs which it should have never been for one thing it doesn't even qualify scientifically as a drug there are certain requirements for something to be a drug and one thing is for it to be addictive the other thing for it to have withdrawals which are kind of one and the same um and weed is not addictive. You, people get addicted to the habit. They want to smoke weed because they like it. But you you can go without weed and you're fine. There's no addiction. There's no withdrawal. Some people think a, a habit is a withdrawal. No, you can like miss it. That doesn't mean it's withdrawal. There's drugs that withdrawal where, like I said, you get sick. Heroin, you will throw up. If you don't have a lot of these pain pills, you're going to throw up. If you don't have, that's withdrawal. Or headaches or nausea or, you know, th- those are withdrawals. Um, just because you're like, oh, I want my weed I feel ed- edgy that's not a withdrawal so um and it's also uh it's from the earth it's from nature and they made it illegal that is so ridiculous it's a plant from nature it's like it's like if they said uh, that a tomato plant was illegal because <laughs> they're like I don't know you guys experienced euphoria when you ate that tomato plant and now the government wants to make it illegal that's literally what they did with weed I know it sounds ridiculous but it was a plant how can you make a plant that grows on the planet illegal and say it's so harmful for us? So if you're still listening to a doctor that says a plant growing on this earth is so harmful and should be illegal and that you're a criminal for uh, consuming it, you tell your doctor to go fuck himself and that he should quit because he has he is outdated in his medical uh, knowledge. He needs to go back to the to the internet and research himself because what doctors learn in medical school is outdated now I'm sorry to say but if you're still going off of what you learned and if you're a doctor on here right now and if you're referring to stuff you learned in medical school you are outdated we are advancing every day with medical and science so you need to be advancing yourself you need to be on the front forefront and what's happened is most doctors are not able to be because where they practice medicine they don't have the forefront technology so they have to continue to prescribe whatever medicine that hospital has and so it's not even always their fault but some of them it is because some of them are giving bad advice and when they're giving bad advice now if they're saying hey i I think you should do something else, but this is all we have, then that's cool. But most of them are saying, no, don't do weed. Do this pill I have right here for you. One thing, no pill is ever better than a plant. Organics, someone asked what organics is, is food from this earth. Food that grows from this earth without being messed with from doctors or scientists. Unfortunately, sorry, as much as thank you, doctors and scientists have discovered a lot of things, but they are discovering that when we mess with food and when we mess with drugs, they become harmful. The most harmful drugs are the drugs that are man-made. Meth is man-made. These pharmaceuticals are man-made. The food that is causing the issue, the process, package, garbage, is man-made. What you need to eat is real animals, real veggies, real fruit in minimal amounts. Remember fruit. Everyone wants to go to fruit because it's all sweet, but that's sugar. Anything sweet, anything that is sweet to your tongue is sugar. Even if it's an artificial sugar, your brain's going to think it's sugar, so now you're going to produce insulin and store fat. That's the problem with the artificial stuff. Your brain still thinks it's sugar. You might not get the calories. That's where they told us, oh, you can have Diet Cokes to the ends of the earth. No calories, and everyone goes, Diet Coke. Jedi Rich used to drink. If I bought two packs of Diet Coke, like two 12-packs, he would drink all of them in one day. So he would drink 24 sodas. If I bought a 12 pack, he would drink 12. If I bought 18, he would drink every soda that was in the house in one day. So I would have to, if I didn't want him to drink 24, I'd have to buy a six pack. So, um, and he thought it was Diet Coke, you know, he thought, oh, no, and he, Jerry Rich, 
Uh, oh, if you ask about our weight, a Jedi Rich lost 125 pounds more now even. That was last time we weighed ourselves, which was about two years ago. So even more now, I'd say about closer to 150 pounds uh, doing what I say. He was up to uh, 330 pounds, uh, or somewhere around there, 300, 320 pounds. 20, somewhere around there, um, at his peak, uh, before we started, um, evaluating, our, that was the other thing, so I was getting very sick from my bulimia, and Jedi Rich was getting very fat, now, he was also bulimic, but he didn't throw up to the level I did, so he would just throw up occasionally, so he was gaining a lot of weight, because we ate all the time, that's what bulimics do, so I was making my husband really fat, and that's what's happening with a lot of the celebs. You're seeing the girl be thin because girls tend to be able to do bulimia a little better. And the guys might be bulimic as well. A lot of these male celebs are bulimic as well. Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber are both bulimic. I know 100% without a doubt. Uh, Ariana Grande, same thing. Miley Cyrus, same thing. We already know Demi Lovato. I don't think she is anymore. That's why she's heavier now. Uh, but she was at one point, so she probably goes back and forth. If you've ever been bulimic, and if you didn't change your lifestyle like I did, then you're going to go back and forth. If you're still eating the foods that you did as a bulimic, then you're going to throw up. It's just the way your body is going to throw that stuff up. You have to change your lifestyle in order to actually recover, and you have to eat like I eat. Otherwise... Any of that crappy food, you're gonna, your body's just gonna want to throw it up because it got so trained and it's so crappy for you. I think, I think your body wants to throw it up anyways. And so if you're a bulimic on top of it, it's like, because that's why we get all these stomach issues. Your body doesn't want that crap. It doesn't want all that dairy, all that gluten, all those GMOs, all that processed, packaged anything. People think of just bad food as fast food, but any fat, they think like fast food restaurants, think of any fast food is bad food. Anything that, unless it's something raw, like, a, unless it's raw, if it's something that was made and it's fast, like you can pop it in a microwave or something like that, then that's not healthy for you. Fast food is not healthy of any level. Like, anything convenient, unless it's like a veggie or a fruit, you know, like where you're eating it raw, but it's something like, oh, you just pop it in the microwave and it... Not good. But that's a real good question because... People say, people don't, like, they, they associate energy with meth or with sh food. Like, here, have this sugar bar or have this meth. They say, but, well, if you don't do meth and you don't eat sugar, where are you getting all this energy? Oh, um, here's the thing. Your body uh, can create energy. Um, the best way to do it is actually from protein. I mean, that's that whole ketosis state. Have you guys heard of the keto diet where you're converting your uh, protein and your fat to energy? That's the state you want to be in, in that constant, like, where you're getting your energy from your added fat and from the protein you're eating. And that's where the, you've heard a little bit of that keto diet, but that's a great state to be in. And then you get insane amount of energy once you kick over into your uh, ketos kick in. Ketosis? Man, you're on fire. It takes a second to get there because you have to cut out all sugar. In order to get to, into ketosis, you have to cut out all sugar. And people don't realize they're getting sugar from everything. And you can get those keto strips. You can check. And you can check when you're in ketosis. And once you kick over to ketosis, you'll feel your that energy kick in. And then you, that's the eye of boundless energy. Right, and also, but yes, but see, people think energy comes from something physical. And what we're saying is, you, you might have everything healthy, but if you don't feel like you're in a good mood. Right. Also, energy comes from, yeah, like just being alive. So like when you feel good, you just feel like this energy comes over. Like when you feel confidence and feel not good about depressed. yourself and not depressed, you have this overwhelming energy. When you're depressed, you feel constantly tired. And you'll notice it has nothing to do. That's what they say. Depression is not situational. People think depression has to do, oh, this happened. This. No, it's just, um, it's like, if anything, it's more chemical, but it's also due to it, chemical because of all the crap you're consuming, but um, it f messes with your brain and stuff, but what happens when you're in depression, you're just tired, and nothing sounds like a good idea, and you're just tired, 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 uh, uh, unmotivated, soon as you get out of depression, whew, you're bouncing off the f ceilings, it's the depression that's tiring you. Right, so what happens is, you see... <coughs> What these, what this next generation doesn't realize is that they were raised by parents that were already depressed. Also, drink water. 
Most people are very dehydrated because they are drinking other beverages. Any other beverage than water is being counterproductive, and they're just straight uh, weight gainers uh, uh, beverages. So drink water, 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 water. Most people live in a very dehydrated state 24-7 in society because they consume so much caffeine and, and juices, juices and stuff. <laughs> juices. Too, too that, see, you did all this stuff with your weight loss, but it never really believed me. It didn't ever start working oh. until, hold on, until you started smoking weed and relieved the depression first. Right. So you ask the back to the question if bulimia is a mental or physical. It's both. Because like I said, I had daddy issues. So I started with anorexia. And what happens to most anorexias is they lead to bulimia. Because um, like I said, I, I first was anorexic and became a vegan. Well, then when I started eating more vegan options, which is the problem with the vegan diet, is it's very high in sugar. So you will gain weight. So I started freaking out. And I thought vegan was healthy. I even I did all the research back then. I had to get a book. I got this vegan book. I made my own vegan food. Uh, I'd make like falafel was one of my favorite things to make. And uh, I'd, I'd have these recipes. I'd make everything vegan options. Um, and I'd drive my mom nuts, but she let me do it. Um, and I did that for about 12 years. But during that time, I decided to become bulimic because I was getting so fat. And that during that was... I was um, very young. I was I started when I was ten, so I, I started to get very chunky around twelve years old because I was eating a vegan diet. Um, and the vegan diet, you will gain weight. At first, people like it because they cut out the dairy, so they find that they have all these wonderful results because they cut out the dairy. But then they start eating the really high sugary things because even the vegan meat. It's too much sugar, and it's also artificial, so your brain's going to treat it as sugar, but even if you get some protein from it, your protein-to-sugar ratio is too high. So regular animal protein has like zero, zero grams of sugar or carbs. It's like zero, and to like a lot of protein, you know, usually, you know, let's say seven grams of protein to zero. All of these other options, these vegan options or these, you know, protein options that are like artificial ones like they'll say or even ones like um uh grains and things or you know where they'll say this is high in protein and it's a a grain or what's the other a beans and things the problem with all of those things is they have higher carbs than meat and so you'll have seven grams of protein to maybe three grams of carbs or three grams of sugar or whatever it may be it's always going to be higher than meat but the problem is Every time you eat that, you're getting that sugar as well. And so you're just, every time you're having your protein, you're getting more and more sugar, and sugar is the issue. You only want 30 grams of sugar a day. That's all your body can process without any issues. That's what it processes. Processes, says, how do you even say it? That's what it processes um, healthily. There's some hard words to put together uh, without getting tongue twisted. Beyond that, the rest, it uh, stores as fat if you don't use it immediately, and it also feeds diseases and cancer. So it's just used at, for and, and candida and things. Um, so any of that excess. So anything over 30 grams a day, you're just feeding, uh, well, you're feeding your fat, you're feeding your candida, you're feeding your cancer, you're feeding your diseases, because most um, things live on sugar. So most... Um, Things that come in your body uh, are going to feed on sugar. So if you don't have sugar, you can't feed those things. Same with most dental issues are due to sugar. We didn't even have um, dentists way back in the day. And people, you know, some people uh, had some major teeth issues, but a lot of people did not until sugar came about. Sugar is when you started having people really have teeth rot out of their mouth and stuff. Um, uh, and that's when dentists... So what's wrong with being fat? Oh, the, it's not a, a how you look, it's how you feel. The heavier you are, the more pressure you're going to put on all of your organs, all of your joints, all everything, your muscles, and um, the actual fat... Um, is due to your body producing more insulin because you were eating high sugar. Well, insulin tells your body to go into a depressed, dormant, um, uh, hibernation mode. So the more weight you have, the more insulin you have in your body, so the more you're telling yourself to be tired day in and day out. That's what your body is saying. So you you won't be as healthy and you're feeding all those dis diseases and disorders and diabetes and things. So the heavier you are, now I don't know what weight that is for you or what your size is. Everyone's different. But you have a size that's ideal. When you 
were created by whatever you believe created you, there was a size that was perfect for you. And everyone has that size. Um, and you find that when you do things like what well, we're doing, the organics, and you go, wow, I never even knew I was this size. I thought I was larger. And I feel fantastic. And I've, I have all this energy. You asked about energy. Well, a lot of times when you're heavier, you're not going to have the energy for the reasons I said. And um, also, um, people generally don't feel as good about themselves when they put on the weight. It's, I don't know why that is. Um, probably for the reason, like I said, because the, the insulin starts to lead to depression and stuff. But they generally feel better about themselves as they start to lose weight. It, it's just I don't know. Everyone does. I've never met someone that was upset when they were losing weight unless they were someone that had struggled with being too thin, which is very rare. But um, normally, you know, they, they people are stoked when they lose weight and they feel upset when they gain weight. That's just if you're not that way, then go for it. Eat till your heart's content. Well, the problem is, though, that a lot of times the body and brain compensate. So they don't even realize they're getting fat each day. They might be in pain, but then they they. they you know, adjusting. Right, you really do adjust. Like, I remember when I put on that weight in 2018, I put on, like, 20, 30 pounds after I stopped the bulimia. Uh, I didn't really realize it at first. I kind of just still thought I was the same. And then um, I put it on in, in, in interesting spots. Like, I put on all of this, like... Um, I thought it was like cellulite. I don't even know what all my legs was I'd never had before. And then... Uh, but I didn't see it because it was behind me. <laughs> So it took me a long time until I filmed a movie one day I was doing to realize I had all of this stuff on my legs I'd never seen before because I'd never had that. And I go, oh, man. Wait. And I was eating a lot. Uh, we were eating a lot of apples. We were doing organics, but we were eating a ton of apples nice. and a ton of um, we were doing coconut um, oil we liked and we were doing um, uh, coffee. A lot of coffee during that time, coconut oil we liked, and we loved like you could get the raw coconut. It, 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 yeah, we would we would eat the raw coconut oil. It was terrible, and apples, but it was all organic. So we thought we were being really healthy. But I, I was just putting on all this fat. And I'm like, why is this new stuff on my legs I've never seen before? And it was just it took for a while to take it off too. It took it just started coming off recently as we cut back on that, and now we just do. The animal protein that's why I say animal protein and greens um, you can do the other things but um, you know and if you right now I would just first just you know, do a little bit at a time like cut out one thing because otherwise you're going to be miserable like cut out one thing that's what we did it we cut out gluten first then dairy then we switched to organics then we um and prior to that, we first did Atkins, like, but we didn't do like organic. So we tried Atkins. We knew that that worked pretty well, but Atkins had some issues because we didn't know about doing organics and we didn't know about the caffeine and stuff. They do recommend to not do caffeine on Atkins, but no one listens to that. It's funny. So we did the Atkins. We did all smoothie diet. Um, we had a Nutribullet that we'd uh, we for a year and a half. We only drank smoothies. We did not eat anything we not chew on anything and that's when we got our fattest <laughs> that oh man but we were the happiest because it was so tasty it's like ice cream every meal go, Ooh, delicious we were putting um like protein powders in there and stuff and um yeah that was uh i i my weight was really climbing up so i started to notice it on the scale before i noticed it like i noticed and not the weight i noticed my body fat percentage kept climbing up because we were trying to work out uh, so i mean we weren't just going we were doing the smoothies and going to the gym two and a half hours a day and uh so we were pretty fit but then I would notice my body fat percentage kept climbing 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 and I'm like what is going on and it was because we were eating so much sugar with those smoothies yeah, the more you go to the gym the more you want to eat yeah yeah the gym is also can be very counterproductive because you have to over consume if you over work out so it's good to stay active but this this thing of like going for two hours and killing yourself well then you're gonna over consume because you're gonna be so famished it's unnecessary it's it's just do a light exercise enjoy yourself don't kill yourself and then eat a light meal but when you kill yourself I know we'd go for two and a half hours and I'd be famished couldn't get food fast enough when I got home I was like we're trying to cook it because we were cooking back then we were still making it organic meals but it was like oh it's taking forever I'm so hungry you know because um we worked out so hard 
And that's also a form of an eating disorder. That's one our society has allowed, but um, overworking out is an eating disorder. Um, so one of the things about uh, having eating disorders for so many years is I got so many books on eating disorders. Everyone gives you a book when they want to help you. So my dad gave me about five books on eating disorders, and um, my mom gave me several, and then some other people, loved ones gave me them, um, and I would read them because I would learn from them. This is when I was like, oh, I'm going to learn the tricks from the girls in the book. So that's how I learned how to be a better I read. So it was funny. There are books to try and help me. I got tips because I read how all the bulimics did everything. I was like, thank you so much. So I read these books. And one of the things in the books they say um, is an eating disorder is they call it um, exercise orexia. And what that is, is you are exercising to lose weight. Like you are either not eating enough and exercising or you're eating exercising to eat does that make sense so like you're you're eating you're exercising so you can eat and not exercising for your health it's like i want to eat so i'm going to exercise it off does that make sense or i'm going to i'm going to kill myself in the gym so then i can eat more or i did eat and i'm going to exercise it off that is the eating disorder once it becomes to eat food if your exercise is just to eat food not for your health, not because you're like, oh, I enjoy being healthy, but I'm eating healthy, then it becomes an eating disorder. And we have that a lot. We have those people that are obsessed with the gym and they, they overconsume, and it's okay with society. We're like, oh, no, that's not an eating disorder. They're just, they're just determined. They are good. They work out for five hours a day. That's good. Um, no, that's no, an eating no, disorder. That is a big-time eating disorder. And most of them actually throw up as well. Um, I dated a, um, a, uh, a, 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 a bodybuilder. He actually competed in uh, um, bodybuilding. So I, I have a history of, like, I've met a lot of people that have done things. He sold steroids illegally. Um, this is when I was 22 years old. He was 45. He sold illegal steroids, and I, I did it with him for a short time when he was out of town. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm like, this little girl selling steroids to these big guys at the gym. It was so obvious to me, <laughs> I felt, because these huge guys, you're trying to slip them something. Like, well, obviously, it's steroids. What else would these guys be trying to buy? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like everyone knew these guys were buying steroids. But anyways, but um, these guys, it was all about overconsuming taking the steroids, throwing up. They would even work out till they threw up, but they also, most of them were bulimic as well. Um, and especially before the competitions. So these guys, because they have to be so lean, so they threw up crazy right before they went on stage, you know, um, or they would just starve themselves. You know, they throw up maybe a couple days before, but then they would starve themselves because right before you don't even drink water because you want to be so... And so a lot of these things where we praise people, these bodybuilders, they have big-time eating disorders. Same with wrestlers. Wrestlers have big-time eating disorders. The UFC guys, all those guys, because they have to be a certain weight. So anytime if you are so conscious on your weight, then you develop an eating disorder. Um, and we'll see that where the, the athletes develop that in, when they're young. I knew a, a wrestler, and I went to school with him from the time of kindergarten all through high school. And he was had eating disorders like crazy. He was a wrestler. Um, he was always, uh, I mean, it was just, you kind of just knew he just threw up. That was, just, you know, he was one of those guys. Um, because you're like, oh, he was a wrestler. That's just what they do. And um, all of those things are very bad for people's health. And these are people that are trying to be fit and um athletes even you know and they're um and it's being so counterproductive and even things like caffeine athletes should not ever be consuming caffeine and all of our athletes do but if you consume caffeine before the gym that's the worst idea because what caffeine does if you guys don't understand what caffeine does caffeine dulls your senses it it, it, it numbs um, all of your senses like your hormones and everything so what it does is makes you feel less tired and feel less hungry but you're not less tired and you're not less hungry you just feel less tired and less hungry but what it also numbs is your hormone for insulin well what you do when you numb that is then it stops producing insulin well then your blood sugar rises as you're on the caffeine that's why your blood sugar rises when you're in caffeine. Uh, it's because you stopped producing so much insulin. Well, now your body goes, uh-oh, I have too much insulin. And so now, I mean, um, sorry. 
I have too much, my blood sugar is rising, now I need to produce insulin. So it starts producing insulin. But the problem with insulin is it tells your body to store fat and tells your body to go into hibernation mode. Well, now, so you went to the gym, you, you, you drank your frappuccino for even, I used to, I would drink a frappuccino before I go to the gym. Drink my frappuccino. Um, go in there. I just told my body to s- stop producing that insulin, but now let my blood sugar rise. So start producing more insulin, which is going to tell me to store fat while I'm trying to go to the gym and tell me to be tired at the end of the day. And then when the caffeine wears off, all that other stuff that was told to chill is now going to flare right back up. So you're going to feel even more tired and you're going to have more insulin than ever. And you're going to be storing more fat, which is exactly the opposite of what you want at the, when you go to the gym. The best thing you could ever uh, consume before you go to the gym is animal protein and water. Eat and eat some uh, beef, organic beef in the morning, and um, water. I know it doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> people want food to be so glamorous, but that's why people are overweight. Food should not be glamorous. It really should just be for nutrition. Unfortunately, people want food to be such a huge part of their existence they want to go to dinners they want to go out now we're experiencing you can't do that but people like to go out on the town they want to have dinners with their family they want it to be this whole experience this whole celebration Uh, and you can still have that i mean you can still we make we make organic meals but they're the same thing every day people want pretty different variety oh you know tonight's taco night tomorrow's pizza night the next night's uh, uh macaroni and cheese night you know they want these different things you can do that, but your whole family is going to be unhealthy and they're going to get fat. It's the bottom line. If you don't mind being fat and unhealthy, then do whatever you're doing. But And if you're still thin right now, but you're finding that your weight is gaining, you're gaining weight, especially right now when you maybe haven't been working, then what your, your diet that you were doing was not working for you. You were just compensating by staying active at work and maybe not eating as much. But if you're gaining weight on the diet that you were doing while you were working and you're gaining weight sitting at home, um, then it's not just because you're sitting around. It's because your diet was, you were doing a diet that eventually was going to catch up with you, but and you were just stalling it because you were staying a little more uh, ahead of it by like, oh, not eating as much, just staying active. But see, while we stay at home, there was even the first one week I was completely depressed after the shutdown, and I barely got out of bed, and I still didn't even gain a pound. If anything, I lost weight on the diet that we do because it, do- it doesn't matter. You don't have to be active. We do choose to be active because we prefer that. But when you eat healthy, it doesn't matter. You can lay in bed and your body is so efficient that it's like burning calories sleeping. It's that efficient. I was losing weight when I was not even getting off the couch and I was eating the same amount that we eat. Um, And I was was just even stunned. I'm like, I thought I would gain weight because in the past when I would eat other things, if I was depressed, I would gain weight when I was depressed. You know, and that makes you even more depressed. It's a vicious cycle. You're depressed because you're eating food, and you're eating food because you're depressed, right? And all sugar things, is not your fault if you're overeating it. The sensor in your brain gets turned off when you eat sugary substances. And right now, almost everything is sugary unless it's organics and, like, the food I'm talking about. So don't think just sugar. People think, like, cake and ice cream and uh, white sugar and stuff when I say sugar. No, any packaged anything is very high sugar. Any vegan option, um, any artificial anything, high sugar. Any of anything from a fast food restaurant. <sighs> anything with buns. Yeah, if you're eat, we eat burgers, but no buns. We eat just the hamburger, the beef, and greens. We make like collard greens and kale. I cook three meals a day, homemade. We don't eat anything other than that. We do not eat when we're out. We get a little hungry when we're out and about because we do not eat anything when we're out and about. There's nothing that we can eat. We, we only eat our home-cooked meals. And it comes down to that when you take your health seriously. You will not trust anyone else to even cook something for you because you don't know what they used as ingredients, and you will take it that seriously. And that's the way I am. I'm like, absolutely not. I would not even take it. Not even if a... Uh, a restaurant said it was organic because I would not. I want to know every ingredient that's in my food now, and I pay attention to that. And as you get healthier, you will take it seriously, and you will not trust um, someone else cooking for you, like in the set, your family. But I mean, like prepackaged stuff. Also, prepackaged is not healthy, and anything that you put in the microwave 
now you took away the nutritional aspect, most of the nutritional aspect of it once you microwaved it. So even if you have your organics, don't microwave them. If they get cold, warm them back up on the stove or pop them in the oven for a second or something to get them warm. But usually put them back on the skillet for a second if it's, you know, burgers or something. Um, because, or eat them cold. But don't put it in the microwave because now you're going to take away all that wonderful organic nutrition that you paid for too that was expensive. And you just took it away by popping it in the microwave. We only use our microwave for storage, for venting when I cook, for a light, and for a timer. We have never turned it on. Unless it was an accident. <laughs> I think I've accidentally hit the button one time. But we've never used it, not since we've lived in this unit. Because ever since we've lived here, we've been on this diet. Um, we've been here about, I think, about a year now. Um... But we've been doing the diet the way we have for about two years now. Uh, once we cut out the caffeine is when we really uh, figured out our diet big time. We're like, oh, caffeine was the thing that was causing the most problem. Because I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out. Like I said, I'd packed on that on the, uh, about 30 pounds after I stopped bulimia. And then I couldn't seem to take it off. And I was eating very light. Um, I mean, I was very conscious about what I was eating. We were eating... Um, you know, all organics and all, all these things, but um, it was the caffeine that would just, I could not get the weight off. And once we cut out the caffeine, the pounds just started shedding off. I was like, oh, I'm telling you guys, the caffeine is the little killer there that you, that no one wants to let go because everyone is highly addicted. It is super addictive too. I went through horrible caffeine withdrawals. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> it's not fun to come off of caffeine. That was one of the worst things, so I, it's not to be a bearer of bad news, but it's not fun, but you're going to see how addicted you are to that substance. And it's a drug. It's a drug, so is sugar. Sugar is a drug. We need sugar su for survival, but it is the strongest drug to humans because we need it for survival. But in larger doses, it starts to become lethal, and it becomes lethal in the ways of not where you drop dead, but it starts to do things to your body like feed diseases, cancer, um, give you more fat, which leads to more disorders. And um, the problem with fat is it um, does put pressure on all of your body in the sense of imagine if you put on a 100 pound pack, like Jenna Rich lost, let's say 130 pounds, I think is around the number. He's anywhere between 125 to 150 because we stopped weighing him at 125 pounds is what he had lost. And that was like two years ago. So I think he lost like 150, but he doesn't know what his weight is now. But, um, but imagine him putting back on his, we'll say 125, because we know that one for sure, on his back, 125 pounds. That would be a lot, right? And then go hike up a mountain. You'd be like, man, I don't want to carry a 125-pound pack. Well, that's what you're doing if you have it in your body. You're still having to carry that on, on your back, on your legs, on your knees, on your feet. On, and that's what you're seeing with people that uh, with obesity. Um, I've had some clients uh, that were obese, and it becomes very... Um, uh, unfortunate for them most of them just want someone to come hang out with them because they can't really do much um they just want you know uh someone to uh, talk to them because they don't get a lot of female companions when they get that overweight um and you know I feel for those people and it's very it's very hard for them and um I um uh, I, I will see anyone. I have no judgment towards anyone's weight or anything like that. I think that is not people's fault. Um, it's a society thing. They mess with the food. People are misinformed on what is really healthy. They're told vegan options. They're told drink caffeine. They're told just work out more. They're told just stop eating. That's your own fault that you just are a pig. And it's not true. It's the food. The food tells you to keep eating because it turns off the sensor in your brain. When you eat that food, the sensor in your brain to tell you you're full turns off. So you'll never feel full. That's why you eat the whole bag of chips. That's why you eat the whole box of cookies. Believe me, I was bulimic. I know. I could not leave food in the house for a night. I ate everything that was in the house every night. It was very annoying because I could only shop for the day because I would eat everything. Because I, I just, if the food was still there, it would, I'd be like, I'm going to go eat it. Because it would be an all-day eating, binging, you know, throwing up. And so I would only buy for the day because if I buy it any more, I would eat it and throw up because it's an addiction. Um, and people said, is it mental or physical? It becomes both. Um, because first it's mental, and usually it starts from an eating disorder of anorexia, and then uh, you start to gain weight when you're anorexic, because eventually your anorexia doesn't work. You can't starve yourself forever. Um, your body will eventually start storing more and more fat, so you'll get fat even if you're not eating. 
So you freak out. So then you say, oh, let me try this bulimia thing where I can eat whatever I want. And people will stop harassing you. Like I said, I had done the vegan. So people were getting on my case. So you're not eating. So bulimia was the perfect fit for me because no one knows. You can still eat. And then you just go excuse yourself and throw up. And then no one bothers you. So I did that. And for a while, no one knew. But eventually bulimics have a hard time eating small amounts. And people start to notice that this small person is eating a lot of food. And you can't help yourself because you're so hungry all the time because you're constantly in a state of starvation because you're constantly starving yourself and you know, you're know you eating and throwing up. So you're constantly, like your body is feeling starved because it's not getting its proper nutrition. And so I, I'm right there with the obese people. I know what that's like to eat everything, to eat a whole thing of ice cream. And I mean the big one. To eat, I used to make myself <laughs> a whole, I would use... Texas toast, and I would make, I'd use the whole loaf, and I would make myself grilled cheese sandwiches from the whole loaf of Texas toast with cheddar cheese, and then I would fry them. I'd make fried, they weren't grilled, fried cheese sandwiches, and then I would put them in a big old thing of tomato soup, and I would make a whole loaf of (laughs) fried cheese sandwiches for myself. When I was single, and I would uh, sit there and I'd eat them and throw them. I mean, so I, I would eat a lot of food. And then we'd go to buffets. I'd, I'd, I'd eat, I'd go to the bathroom, throw I got I got kicked out of one buffet one time. They told me I couldn't come back because <laughs> they knew I was bulimic. But um, so I know what people are experiencing. That's why I talk about the bulimia. So if you are struggling with, you're sitting at home, you're watching TV, you can't stop eating them chips, I know exactly what you're going through. And I'm telling you, when you eat like this, you will never feel that way again in your entire life. And it's the most wonderful feeling to not feel that. To not feel uh, the desire to eat all the time, to not worry about food, to not be thinking about food 24-7, to not be worrying about your weight, to not be thinking about your weight, to not be um, worrying about uh, how your clothes look because you just go, I don't care, I'm feeling good, so whatever, the weight's coming off. That's what starts to happen is The weight will start to come off, so whether you're at your ideal body yet, you'll already start to feel better. So you'll be, like, rocking it. You know, you lose 5, 10 pounds, you're like, I'm feeling better. And then you lose 5 and 10 more pounds, 5 and 10 more pounds, 5 and 10. You're like, jeez, look at me. That's pretty good. And I'm telling you, I was never someone that felt good about myself. I really didn't. I I tried to kill myself a bunch of times. Um, I I was really insecure. I did not have boyfriends in high school. I didn't talk to boys. I talked to, like, one guy in one of my classes. He's still, like, on Facebook. Um, But uh, I was so shy. Um, I, I, the only time I was ever outgoing is when I drank, I needed alcohol to be outgoing. And then I became crazy, like the wild, crazy, most annoying person at the party that often, um, people had to take care of. I'd be falling over drunk. I was a really bad drunk. I became a really, really bad alcoholic too, um, to where I was drinking a liter and a half of rum a day for a, a good year. Um, when we lived in Panama, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I maybe, maybe for a week didn't drink, but the rest of the time we drank for um, that whole year. And I, uh, when we left, I was drinking um, a liter and a half of rum a day. A uh, would try to give me some. He couldn't. He, I would just sneak it. I would. Um, I, it was a lot. And um, so I, I know what some people are going through. If you're struggling with alcoholism, um, I'm telling you, weed is the answer. Weed is the answer for your eating disorders, for your alcoholism, for your weight. People think weed makes gives you the munchies, so they don't want to do weed. It might for a second, because here's what happens with weed. Weed tells you what you really feel. And that's why people don't like weed. It freaks them out. Because, oh, man, I thought all these crazy things. Yeah, because that's what your feelings were really feeling, and you don't like the truth. That's why people trip out on weed, because they they experience the truth and it scares them and usually the truth is that they don't like their life because their life is shitty like they set up a shitty existence for themselves not in the sense that they don't like life it's like no I chose this shitty job I chose maybe to get married when I didn't want to maybe to have kids when I didn't want to I mean all these things come up and that's why people don't want to smoke weed because they're like man I realize I'm not happy with my life and it's all due to my choices that I made and that's why a lot of Probably married people with kids don't do weed because they'll realize they don't like their kids or something. I don't know. I don't have kids, but I'm sure that happens. Some people are like, I don't do weed. And they're like, oh. I'm like, yeah, because she tells you you can't stand your husband or wife or something. You know what I mean? And um, 
So right away, most people are undernourished. Even if you're obese, you could be undernourished because you're choosing the wrong options. So you're not actually getting your proper nutrition. Your sugar is not a good nutrition. It's and most people are just consuming basically sugar. Uh, you want protein. So if you go to consume weed and you've been doing a bad diet, you'll feel hungry because you're like, oh, your body is saying you're hungry for real food. It wants real food. So if that happens to you. Go for animal protein during that time. Don't go for the macaroni and cheese and potato chips and Skittles. Go for the animal protein, and then you'll be like, oh, okay, I was needing protein. That's what the weed was telling me. And then you won't get that munchy thing. But what happens is people go for the chips, and they make macaroni and cheese, and they make cookies, and they go, oh, the weed, oh, we just did all this. Weed cannot make you do anything. It's not like alcohol. It's not. It actually, you know what you're doing. You might be laughing uncontrollably the first time, but um, you're very aware of what you're doing. So you know that you're making the food. It's not like alcohol where you black out. So you can consciously say, let me choose a healthier option. But people want to use weed as an excuse to get the munchies. And often people then throw up after. They'll do the same thing with alcohol. They'll use alcohol as an excuse to then overeat, and then they'll throw up and blame it on the alcohol. These are all versions of bulimia that society has accepted. Often people, oh, I just threw up from the alcohol. But often people made themselves throw up from the alcohol, or they drank to where they knew they were going to throw up, and they did that on purpose. Because you have to drink a lot to throw up from alcohol. I know. I've, I've done it, and I've not done it. <laughs> and um, it's usually when I did throw up, it was with the mission to get wasted. You know, it was, oh, I'm going to get fucked up, and I didn't care if I threw up. And um, so that's generally the mentality. So it's all of this overconsumption mentality is the issue, and it's not good for your body. You say, what's the problem? Your body doesn't, and you know, they always say that everything in moderation, and we hate that thing, but it's the truth because this up and down with your body is going to cause problems, and then your brain is going to react in the safest way, and what the safest way is to rest and store fat and relax. That's what it always wants to do. Kick off the insulin. If everything is like, oh, I don't know, you're freaking out, your blood sugar's rising, kick off the insulin. You ate too much sugar, kick off the insulin. Oh, you know, it's kick off the insulin. You're getting too excited, kick off. It does that because um, insulin tells your body to store fat and to chill. And when your brain gets nervous because you're doing something that it doesn't understand, it just does that. Because your brain is all about safety. People think you can trick your brain. You can't trick your brain. Um, what you can do is you can have your brain not understand what it's doing, so then your brain will then just produce insulin. But people think you can trick your brain in the sense of like, oh, I did this exercise this day. No, that's just variety. That's all right. That's not tricking your brain. That's keeping your brain motivated. Tricking your brain, for one thing, you can't do because you are connected to your brain. <laughs> it's a concept of that one side can't tell the other side what the other side's doing. Left side can't tell the right side. Yeah, it's, it's all you. So when you think, oh, I'm going to do this exercise or diet, it's going to trick my brain and my brain. And they still say that with some of these diets. Oh, it's about tricking your brain. No, you want to motivate your brain. So changing up your exercise routine is not a bad idea. Things like that because it can be more, more fun and you can work out different parts of your body and uh, it's not so monotonous. Um, and it's good to, you know, but food is one of the things that your brain would like to keep consistent because there is only so many things that you were supposed to ever consume. Those were the things from the earth. Unfortunately, now we have all these other options that were not from earth and we thought they would be okay. And they have been okay in the sense of people didn't die directly, like in the sense they didn't drop dead. And so people are living, but people are more depressed, heavier than ever. We have more obesity than ever, more suicide than ever. I heard suicide has gone up just since this whole virus debacle. Um, we have kids uh, killing kids in school more than ever because kids are depressed and get made fun of and uh, don't feel good about themselves. When I went to school, there were no school shootings. That did not exist until um, probably like as I was coming out of school, I think they had the Columbine was the first thing I remember. Um, but that was uh, as I was, I think, in high school, I want to say. And maybe even, I don't remember when that year it was, but um, 
that was like the first thing I remember. Um, but before that, kids were not killing kids in school. Uh, that just wasn't happening. But now we have, and we say, oh, it's because of social media bullying. But a lot of the social media bullying has become because people don't feel good about themselves. And a lot of the kids are more overweight than ever. I watched a documentary a couple years back with Michelle Obama when she was trying to get the kids active, which is not about being active, you guys. Yes, being active is a good idea, but being active will not work off the amount of sugar these kids are consuming ever there's not enough activity in a 24-hour day for them to work off the amount of sugar they're consuming and the, the caffeine and the things you know all the the the, the insulin that's being produced to where it's you know all of this stuff they can't work it off so this idea of telling kids oh you're just not being active enough and and these poor kids were trying to do this workout thing it's a shame what they needed to tell them was better food options and they were telling them but they were telling them wrong and that was another one where i saw a doctor giving this kid the worst advice ever they were telling this poor kid he was really struggling with his weight he was in junior high and he just he was i don't know his weight but he was larger and he was very upset about it and he was struggling 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 to lose weight trying everything and um all of his food options were terrible i would watch it and i forget exactly what he's eating but i was like if he just chose different options the kid would lose so much weight it had nothing to do and he was trying to work out working and he wouldn't even have to work out really so i'm saying it's all about what you eat not about working out you do light exercise when you're on this diet but there's no you don't need to work out like i said i slept for like a week uh, at the beginning of this, I barely got out of bed, and I lost weight. It, it, it's insane. It's not about that we've had this idea since we started eating the bad food that you can just exercise it off. You can exercise quite a bit of it off yeah, if you really, really exercise. And you'll see some people that kill themselves at the gym, but you'll still see those people start to put on the weight year after year. You'll see the celebrities are getting larger than they've ever been. If you watch old movies, like in the 70s, the actors were substantially smaller. And the reason for that is the hormones and steroids and GMOs that are be being given to the foods, as in the animals, the plants, whatever, the packaged things, you are now consuming those. So even if you're not getting fat, you're actually getting bigger because you're actually consuming hormones and steroids now that they were giving to the animals or the fruit or whatever it be that you were eating. And that's why you want to do organic. So your actual body mass and muscle, and that's why you're seeing guys at the gym getting bulkier and bulkier. Some of them want to be that way, but <laughs> they would be smaller. They could be super ripped, but smaller if they weren't consuming so many hormones and steroids. Now, some of the guys are consuming hormones and steroids additionally, so they obviously want to be that big. <laughs> they want to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. My brother that passed away was into that when he was still alive. He had the, this is back when we were, you know, he didn't have the internet really, so he had an Arnold Schwarzenegger book, and he was trying to do his workouts and stuff. He wanted to be big. He wanted to be able to, where you couldn't walk through the door, you had to turn sideways. My brother ended up dying in a motorcycle accident when he was 26, but he was all about working out all the time, getting all buff. And um, a lot of these people are actually just trying to be lean, but they're having to bulk up because it's their only option because of the food they're eating. So it's either be fat or be bulky like be muscle but be bulky whereas as you'll see in the old movies the actors were smaller because before they start messing with the food you didn't have those hormones and steroids and all this crap and all the sugar and all the caffeine people have really been up in the amount of caffeine too i mean people were drinking coffee for a while but the amount we're consuming now is unheard of not me anymore i haven't drank caffeine in two years but the amount some people are is just through the moon so now we're seeing even when you watch the movies you're seeing the actors are larger than they've ever been and i don't mean just that they're hiring larger actors i mean the individual actor if you look at someone you'll say uh you know whoever it may be if you look at them when they were younger they will be smaller and now like let's say edward norton is a good example we were watching some of his movie, older movies he was smaller in stature in his older movies now you say okay well he just got older but see being older does not make a difference about your body that's the misconception what it actually is is the food has made people as they get older get bigger but now me and jennifer are saying i'm 35 he's 52 we're smaller than we've ever been in our life 
except for maybe when we were a younger age. Like, but I'm smaller than I've ever been at the at this height in my life. You know what I mean? Like when I was five six, I'm five foot six. This is the smallest I've ever been. I'm in the smallest pant size I've ever worn in my life. I was never able to wear it, and it's um, it's because as you eat organics, you start to shrink everything um i've always had big hips so i just always thought i'd wear a certain size pants and now i still have my hips but everything is kind of shrinking and not even by choice it's not like we're consciously because i'm not trying to lose any more weight believe you me if anything now i'm i'm a little more on the thinner side because uh with this current uh shutdown we've just been so active more than i wanted to be because i've been having to walk to the store and stuff to get beef but um so now i'm like even extra lean but n- normally you know we don't make any conscious effort we just eat our three meals a day our organic beef and greens and garlic and our water and we feel full we feel satisfied we have so much energy we don't ever feel hungry unless it's literally time for another meal and you're hungry in a different way than you've ever experienced not that oh i'm so hungry you're just kind of like Okay, we sometimes we'll say we're hungry. Like, me and Jarvis will be like, hey, I'm like, are you hungry for dinner? And he's like, yeah. And then we get on a project, and three hours later, we're like, oh, yeah, we were going to cook. You know, and we, and we forgot. It, it just goes away. You forget. Because sugar is the one that's going to be constant nagging on your brain. You're hungry. You're hungry. Think about that. Oh, you got that in the fridge. Oh, you didn't finish that. Oh, you know, you're just constant, 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 constant. I know. I live that for years and so the reason why I do these is because I was tormented for my entire life until the last two years with weight and stuff and being like I said since the age of basically five because my mom was anorexic she wanted to kill herself when I was five and I'm so I got all kinds of whacked out and then all I cared about was just being thin that's all I knew was important just be thin be thin be thin be thin because my mom considered being uh, thin next to godliness, you know, cleanliness and being thin next to godliness kind of thing. She was Christian. So I grew up uh, Christian, and now I'm a Satanist for those of you. But it's not a religion. Satanism is just being free, just listening to your feelings, um, just being open to the universe. Uh, there's no religion. I don't, I don't do the religions. I'm about freedom, I'm about doing what you feel and what you feel, not what I do. Now, I'm telling you what worked for me. Now, you could be different, like, for the uh, nutrition, but I'll tell you what, the same thing worked for Jedi Rich. So that's why I feel comfortable usually telling you guys, but, hey, maybe it won't work for you. I'm just telling you what worked for me and Jedi Rich. Jedi Rich lost over 125 pounds. Um, I got over 15 years of being a bulimic, which is pretty much unheard of. We hear people that uh, say they recovered from bulimia, but you can still see that they have bulimia, and you can see it in things by their physical things, um, you could see maybe they're either still, um, have that little belly thing going on. So what happens with bulimia is they'll get thin in certain spots and then have, they store fat in spots they don't like. So often you'll get like bulimia bloat is what people get where they get like a pooch. So often girls won't want to show their belly when they're bulimic, but they'll show their skinny legs and arms, but they'll cover the belly. So they'll wear a lot of things like those bell dresses are really popular and those skirts that poof out. And you just show, like, right here, but then it poops out here because they have a pooch right here that drives them nuts. They don't like wearing swimsuits because they can't get rid of that pooch. And that's from your body storing that because you're not being healthy. It's storing that for later. So you can't cheat the system. Like, your body will balance it out in ways you don't like. And that's why um, eating disorders drive people insane, too, because you never get the point you want because you always have, like, that belly that's bothering you or... Uh, I would get a really bloated face. Um, and so I would, I, photos I just hated. And it wasn't until I finally got over my bulimia that I finally started to like a photo. I hated photos my entire life. Absolutely hated them. I remember that maybe like in high school, maybe, maybe liking one photo, but I, I can't even think of one that I liked. I remember because you'd have to be like, find one photo of someone asked you and you're like you maybe had one that you held on to but and even that one I didn't really like um and then now we when I take photos now I'm like oh I like that oh I like that one oh that works okay that one's not so good but hey I like that one it's like we're 
when you don't feel good about yourself, you're like, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, you know? And that's how I used to be with photos. Now, for the most part, I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. You know, and every once in a while, you'll see, like, oh, dude, that's, that's not the best. But that, you know, everyone has bad photos. But when you sit there and you criticize every photo of yourself, then you know you're not feeling good about yourself. Because you should be attracted to yourself. Because if you're not, then what are you doing? Because you need to be making yourself attractive. You know what I mean? Like, you should find yourself attractive. That's what everyone's goal is. Like, they want to be attractive, right? And you say, oh, looks aren't everything. No, but attractiveness is more than just looks. Attractiveness is being that, like, it's everything, your whole being, your sexuality, your uh, your looks, your personality. All that makes attractiveness, um, your character, you know, how you hold yourself, your, your manners, your, you know, your demeanor, whatever. That's what we mean by attractiveness. Um... You should be attracted to yourself. Like, you should look in the mirror and say, I like the way I look. And if you don't, well, then you should change that. Because you should. And I know people have flaws. Of course, I have crooked teeth that I hate. They drive me nuts. They look terrible. I hate that. But whatever. I have them. But everything else, I'm like, okay, that works. Okay, I don't like this. But yeah, everything else, that's fine. Uh, pass right but if you're looking at yourself and you go oh uh, everything well then fix that because you should look in the mirror and you should feel good you should be happy with what you see you should like what you see you may not be as pretty as someone else you may not be you know this victoria's secret model fortunately i i look at giselle her perfect teeth perfect giselle and tom brady and you go oh my goodness Jeez Louise, the jeans on them people, no, I'm just kidding, but um, you know, some people just have these, uh, I, I uh, tend to have a lot of the things that are not um, favored qualities, but I have a lot that are, but I have things like being, I'm part Irish, part Scottish, and then part Native American, so a lot of the things that are cool I got from being Native American, but a lot of the things that are not so cool, like really, I would have had really fair skin. My mother is a redhead, was a redhead with freckles all over her body and the fairest of skin. Luckily, I got um, some advantages by being Native American because um, Irish people tend to have very fair skin. Um, we tend to break out our skin. Um, uh, we're very, very sensitive to things. Like, my skin is so sensitive to just touch and anything. And um, I have very small bones. I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, my family's not, you know, our bones break easy. And we have very poor teeth that get cavities very easy. That would be my genetics. Um, but luckily, my Native American genetics gave me a little bit more where I can actually uh, tan. I don't burn. My mom can't, couldn't be in the sun. She would get skin poisoning. But um, everyone, you know, has their genetic makeup and they have their things that they love about themselves and the things they hate. But what you got to do is you got to embrace the things you don't like, but, but also fix the ones that can be fixed if it's something that bothers you enough. Like your weight. Eat different. Bottom line, smoke some weed. Eat different. And the weight one could be solved if it's something like uh, a nose or your teeth. That one is, costs more money. I could get the teeth one done. Not right now. I can't afford it. But that one I might eventually do. I wouldn't recommend doing surgeries. People are doing surgeries. I mean, if you really have to do that for your security. But I feel like if you have to change your face, like in the sense of nose surgeries, plastic surgeries... I feel like you're kind of going against the force. Like, you kind of have to, like, embrace who you are. Embrace your nose. Embrace. That's why I kind of do embrace my teeth. That's partially why I haven't fixed them is, well, growing up, we couldn't afford to. And my, uh, when I was in high school, they said you can get a car, a $2,000 car, or your braces. That would be your option when I would turn 16. So I chose a car. <laughs> and then... Um, I didn't, I couldn't afford them um, as I got older. Um, and then um, I didn't want them at some point because I just didn't want to have the braces, you know, like I, that I wanted, um, I wanted the straight teeth, but I didn't want the braces because my sister ended up getting them when she was like 25 and they just looked terrible for the first two years. So I was like, oh man. Um, so I waited, but I might eventually get, I'd like to get like the Invisalign just because uh, it's more for health now because actually teeth becomes a health thing. So since mine are so crowded, I'm getting a lot of um, 
uh, uh, build up and uh, plaque and decay in some spots even because when your teeth are crowded you can't get them cleaned in certain areas as well as other spots so that could actually start to become a health thing so I might do that eventually they, they actually recommend that every time I go to the dentist but it's expensive and now with the economy tanking but anyways but I, I would recommend not doing things that are permanent like a surgery because if, if you took off the weight, you'd probably feel a lot better. And then you kind of regret that you changed your body for life in something like a, you know, permanent thing. Um, and a lot of celebs are doing that, a lot of plastic surgery. And really, if they just ate better, they would look younger. Eating better makes you look younger. In the bottom line, everyone wants to look younger, right? They want to find the fountain of life. Uh, you know, that the fountain of youth. Um, it's organics and weed, I'm telling you. And water water people don't want to drink water i know no one wants water it's like oh, you want water no i don't want water i got anything else but sparkling water can give you a little bit of that kick if you're used to eating kind of like uh soda beverage you know if you like the carbonation you get that little like ooh, little bubbles where it can be enough of a difference from just regular water if that makes sense so you feel like you're doing something different because sometimes you just want something different so we do the sparkling water but avoid the flavorings because that's going to give you issues like if it says lemon or lime even if it says natural natural doesn't mean anything it's just a marketing term there's no definition for natural like anyone could stamp natural on it it's like that tommy boy where you know you could put guaranteed on a box of shit it's still just a guaranteed box of shit you know um it's natural is all marketing there's no uh there's no like actual regulation where organics if it's USA organic has a regulation of what it has to be so when you see natural it might be they might have done something they might I mean look at what it says if they say you know oh no antibiotics and hormone you that might be a better option for you but I won't choose that option I only do organics but if it that if you want to go for that if you don't if you don't want to switch to organics yet I know the natural does have things that are better for the animals they do like some cruelty free things and stuff so there are some but it the actual term natural doesn't mean anything so you can't just say oh it's natural because it, it's just a marketing term um, we could not get that through Jenna Rich's mother's head. She would keep b buying us natural stuff and cooking that, and we said we can't eat that. So we had to stop going to family functions because she'd be so offended. We couldn't not eat. She would be so offended. So we said we can't come over anymore because you cook stuff that we can't eat, and then you get your feelings hurt. So unfortunately, we cannot come over. And it might come down to that, but you take your health more serious than even maybe your extended relatives if they don't understand. I wouldn't say cut out your children, but I would say make your children eat what you're eating. So you have control of your children. You might not have control of your parents. You can make your kids eat what you're eating. Your parents are from a different gen. They might be stuck thinking you're supposed to do this and that, and that's what Jarvis's mother is, and we cannot convince her otherwise. Um, so we cannot eat with her, unfortunately. Uh, so, and it's tough because there's very few functions that exist around not eating. But you know what? When we're, just, we're seeing with social distancing now, more people are doing online. You don't really even need to get together. So this whole um, getting together to eat looks like it'll probably be limiting. I mean, eventually we'll start getting back together, but I think people will be less. So maybe more people will do more of um, not having to get together over food-related things. So I just started TikTok today, you guys. I was just thinking about I want to go do a TikTok video. I'm having so much fun because here's the beautiful thing. So uh, we've been doing social media for like several years now. I guess like three three years is pretty solid. Three years where we've been like on it almost every day. And then before that, we did just a handful of it, you know, prior to that, but very little. But um, yeah, I'm wrapping up you here. Have more, you have more to do? No, I'm almost done. This one is burned, burned out. Oh, okay, good. Do you have, yeah. When did it burn out? A while ago? Probably just recently. Um, oh, you can stop that one. Oh, oh. oh okay.
on my jail, my deeds with the Kanye, yo. My name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, it's like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Check it out.